Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, we are going to continue working with the Share Sunshine Stamp Set as I show you how to cut out stamped images using your Scan and Cut. You will learn some of the same skills as the reinforcement and you are going to learn many new skills such as working with building patterns, saving and retrieving data, changing the cutting area of your machine, and using a feature called Auto Layout. These are the projects I created with page one of the digital stamp set. Stick around, I'll show you what the digital stamp set looks like. And I will also show you projects that I create from the tutorial today, which is going to be creating quarantini projects. So these are just some of the many projects you can create just from page one of the digital stamp set. And all of the proceeds from the download go to fighting the COVID-19 efforts. So they're for relief efforts, research efforts, and you can pick one of two charities that Stampin' Up! has partnered with globally because we are a global company and the digital download is in many languages. So shout out to Cheryl Wells for the, being the first one to download this. And I'm not sure she's the first one in the world, but the, she's the first one from my video that commented that she downloaded the digital stamp set. And so many of you have, and I just want to thank you because hundreds of dollars were raised already just from this audience, not to mention the global audience. I'm sure we've raised thousands at Stampin' Up! So thank you for everyone who said you downloaded these projects. I'm just putting this page on the mat right now, is what I'm doing. I cut out several of page four. When I say page four, it's a 15 page PDF download. All right, so Cheryl, for being the first one to download this project, you are going to get some things I created in that video. So you're going to be getting a prize from me. I'll get in touch with you. And you're going to be getting something from the from this stamp set that I created, some creations, some 3D creations. All right, so I have my mat loaded. Here's the page. Overall big picture. And oh, by the way, and a follow up is thank you for all of your suggestions, especially RT and Kim for the color recognition mode suggestion, which does work. But in my case, I ended up get, cutting this one out by um, I had to trace around the edges again. But thank you for all your suggestions and I didn't want to be defeated. So let's start with that. Let's start with the overall concept of what I'm going to do. So first I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to show you this part. So let me, if you have to cut out a lot of sentiments with, you, you print these all out of your printer. You print out loads and loads of these pages from the digital stamp set. It's a 15 page download. So I print them all out and then I have all these pages. And now you're like, I want to cut out, I want to cut out this. I want to cut out, have another quarantini. And I want to cut these out with rectangles. And it doesn't really matter if it's a rectangle, an oval. It doesn't matter what you cut this out with. The point is you don't want to do this over and over again with your scan and cut. And you don't want to have to use a paper trimmer. So I made myself a little template. And then if, as long as I put the paper, this is my, my mat. So I put the paper two inches over. It doesn't matter where you put it. But as long as I put my template in the same spot each time, then my template will work. So that's my little template. So I cut out loads and loads of these sentiments already using this concept. See? So I have the measurements written down here and I'm gonna go over the measurements and then you're going to learn how to save and retrieve the file. And then we'll work on the martini glass next and, and outlining the martini glass and the whole thing. So in other words, you're gonna learn how to complete a whole entire project by what I'm showing you. We'll, you're gonna learn the entire project. Hey, that, that light didn't look bad. I'm gonna leave the light on. So, here we go. We are going to the home screen. So, we're going to, this is, we're gonna make some rectangles. Okay, again, if you don't wanna cut these out in rectangular shapes, use whatever shapes you want. And you might not even be on page four like me, but I'm on page four. So, just take the concepts and that I'm teaching you and apply them. So I went to the shapes icon, see that? I went to this one, the first one called shapes. And I, I'm gonna pick a square, which I will turn into a rectangle. How? By unchecking this box with the direct, this is, now then when I change the width and height, they don't stay in proportion. If I leave that box selected, then I, the width and height change in proportion. So what I want for the top one is I want the height to be 0.75 inches high. Point seven five. there we go, 0.75. And we want it to be 2.75 inches long. So no matter where you're at in the world, even though you might have different, you might be using A4 paper, 
it doesn't matter, you're still gonna, you can use these measurements and it'll still work. And if you're in the metric system, change your units to inches and you'll have the right measurements that I'm using. So there we go, now we need two of those. So two rectangles this shape. And I'm sorry I haven't got to write the description for the last video yet, I've been very busy, but I will write the description of this video and the one before it. So let me just turn off my background so you're not confused about my background because we're going to get to background scanning in a minute. So we have two, right now we have two rectangles. Now we need two more. So what we've done is we created the two rectangles for the top ones. I have another quarantini and now we need to create the two rectangles for this one. It's like a normal martini, but you drink it at home alone. So let's, let's add. We're going to say add. We're going to go to pattern and we're going to select shapes, square or rectangle, uncheck that box and the height is going to be half an inch high and of course let me, let me use my stylus I want you to use the tools that you actually have and you can actually see it better so half an inch high and it's going to be 2.5 inches wide and again I'm teaching you things that you can apply to whatever projects you have so really Maybe you're not even making these cards, but you want to use a different page of the digital stamp set. Use this concept that I'm teaching you. So you need two of those. All right, so the concept is this. So now we have two big rectangles and two smaller rectangles. And we're like, well, where do they go? So I've already put the, I've already put the paper in the mat. I'm going to use background scan. This is a review from my last video. This part, background scan, and we're scanning in whatever's on the mat. Now you're going to use the same printer for all your printout of the digital stamp set. So of course, whatever template we create that we can save and reuse is going to be, it's going to be like the same one over and over again as long as I keep using this on page four. So there's, there are my squares, um, rectangles, sorry. And I'm gonna put them there, but you know, I'm like, I can't really see that that well. Let's put them in the general area, right? But you can't really see them that well. So what I like to do is I like to go into edit and I like to zoom in, okay? zoom in and now I can see them a lot better right I can put these right where they go so let's say about there and of course that one was in color so that's good and you can use this little arrows to nudge it so we're going to nudge it up okay and then we're going to put this one there what we're doing is we're just surrounding the sentiment but we're centering it right we're centering the sentiment and a little bit over and we'll put that one there and I could use my line tools and make sure these are line property, but it's okay. It's all good. You know, we're just, this is way more accurate than a trimmer. My trimmer has a hard time with half inch increments. I like using the scan and cut. It's just way more accurate. And I'm putting this one, you can use your stylus or you can sort of use these arrow keys. Okay, so I'm pretty good with that. Yeah, I like these. Okay, so there we go. We have them outlined. We can zoom back out. Or actually, it doesn't matter. Once we say okay, we'll be zoom, we can zoom back out. Okay, so now, what we have is this. We have four, we have four rectangles that we can just cut out. And we'll have our sentiments cut out for us. But hey, that still doesn't save us time in the future, right? So go, so first let's select all these. Let's select these four. And we're going to use this selection, the second selection, which is just selecting everything instead of having to draw a selection. So now all four objects are selected. We're going to go OK and go into Object Edit. And you see this little button? This is our grouping. It has a little circle and a triangle. What we want to do is put these in a group. OK, so click on Group. And there we have it. So now we have one object that can move around independently if we need to move it. And we may need to move it, and I'll explain why. But let's, we, for now we don't need to move it. Just say okay a couple times and we're gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and cut it. And it's gonna take a minute, so. I can tell you some things while it's doing that. So it's cutting, it's cutting out our, it's using auto blade technology. If you're using the CM model instead of an SDX, I'm using the SDX 125 to do this tutorial, then if you're using a CM model, you're gonna have to change the blade depth based on the type of cardstock you're using. And when I use a Whisper White cardstock, I tend to have to use a blade depth of about four. 
So give that a try if you're using a different model. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna, I just need to keep this right where it's at. So we're finished cutting. I'm gonna pull this off, now check this out. In fact, here's another, I'm gonna, I just, I'd like to give you lots and lots of tips and tricks. I could, I could pull this off, okay? I could do, there's a few ways of lining up your next paper. There's several ways, but let me, I can, this is one thing I was doing when I was cutting loads of these, is I just put some tape on the right and left side. So that's one way to line up your next paper. The other way to line up your next paper, there's three ways, I'll just give you three ways to line up your next paper, is, so one way is putting tape so that on the right and left, okay, that's one way. Another way is the fact that I did start this paper on, on this line, which was two inches in, okay, so leaving the paper on the same time. And then I found another little sort of nice kind of cool trick, is, is just kind of using, where's my next paper? Let's find, a, let's find a paper like this. So another trick was like this, I could, I can take, I can sort of lift these up Woo! before I peel these ones off the bottom. Okay, I don't want to peel the ones off the bottom yet. I'm going to give you a little, another little trick. So I, I went like this and I did this little trick where I put this paper under there like that. And this was just another way to verify it was in the right spot. And I went like this with my little template and I'm like, oh, okay. See, and the little squares lined up, but I still have to go remove the ones from beneath. But then I can kind of attach that to the sticky part. I can sort of lift it up, lift it up, but not removing, don't move it. And I can peel, pull these off because you don't want to cut on top of these again, right? You want to pull those off to the side. So we have, have another quarantine. I, I think that the petal pink was a little bit light, a light font, just because of my printer. All right, so there we go. There we have it. And so those are the three ways to line it up. Okay, so we have tape. We have the two inch mark, we're using that. We have the pieces of tape to help us line it up or we just have like the sort of trick where I overlay one thing over another. Okay, so let's do this. We can just say finish cutting and without doing any saving, I just wanna explain that you could just do this over and over again, not even saving your file. You can just keep on clicking cut and we can cut again, but we're not going to because I have a better way. And we can just keep saying cut all day long because we keep replacing the paper and cutting out the same template. So let's not though. Let's go back. Let's not keep cutting because maybe you have other things to do. You can't cut the same sentiments all day long. So we're gonna, we're gonna use the save. Now remember, these are already grouped together, so we're just gonna click save. Where do you wanna save? We wanna save it to the machine, online to Canvas Workspace, or to our USB. Let's see if my machine's not totally full. It's saying you have a grouped pattern. It's saying you can't ungroup the pattern. That's okay, just say okay. I love grouping, it makes it more useful for later. Okay, and then, yep, it's in my machine's memory. All right, so it's tomorrow. Let's, let's just do this. We're gonna go all the way home. I'm gonna turn off the background just so you don't get confused by that. It's going home. Now, it's the next day. You've come back to your machine and you're like, boy, I would love to make some more quarantini cards. I didn't make enough yesterday. And you turn on your machine and you're like, Oh, I don't want to have to draw those rectangles again. I can't remember what size they were. Well, you go to retrieve data, go to retrieve data, and you're going to retrieve the file from your machine. This is the places you can retrieve it from machine, canvas workspace, USB, or this one is the USB directly to the laptop. We're going to click the first one. It's where's it at? It's on the last page. You could go page by page, or you could jump to the last page. There's my template. Okay, so I just taught you how to create a template that you can reuse. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my template because remember, we've already lined our paper up in the right place. I'm gonna cut my template. Okay, we're gonna click start. Now, it's gonna cut out the template in the right space, right spot. But if it doesn't, then there's a way to fix that. We can use our background scan again and I'll show you that. I'm just showing you this part so you can actually see it cut. Okay, so there we go. We can do the cups separately, so I'm not worried about the cups. Now the paper wasn't taped down at all. I was just using those ones on the side as a guide. I'm gonna leave those there actually, it doesn't really matter. And we have these perfectly cut out sentiments for us. This is petal pink. This is, every page has coordinating colors when I'll show you that. 
and petal pink is that color and like I think that is hard to read but it made me use the color though it was nice because it went really well with the old olive and I used it for my, my, my martini and then we have quarantini and then this is old olive and basic black I think black is the easiest to read but I mean you could do one in the outside one on the inside of the card and there we have it so now you know how to save time and use a file and you know reuse the file so let's put the people let's put a piece of paper down I'm just gonna get a fresh one although you could use the graphics from this one I'm just getting a fresh one so you're not confused okay we're just gonna start now so you understand that concept and so now you understand how to do that so we already now we know how to get our sentiments cut out so one more thing and I did want to show you this before we move on because I don't want to make you wait for every rectangle to be cut in the universe but what I did is I then I also made myself a bunch of little rectangles to be my backgrounds so here let me find one that's darker so here so now I'm not going to do this in this tutorial just because of time we could be here all day so let's take I think it's this one have another quarantine nope that must have been for the last hmm you know what I think I made these too wide but it doesn't matter but you get you get the idea you're gonna make it doesn't matter you can do some that are I made I made these as backgrounds for these okay so that's what I wanted to show you all right and this is why we're gonna put notes in there it says 2.75 2.75 wide hmm and 2.5 okay well that that's what it says and that's what we did and they do look good yep they all look good anyway let's not digress because you get the concept it doesn't really matter what size you made it the, the point of that first exercise was to save and reuse a template now we're gonna do this so for the point of this part of the exercise is I'm gonna use the tape only to hold it down I'm just gonna hold it down sometimes I use painters tape to hold down my my paper but especially when you're cutting stamped images I like to use direct cut for cutting stamped images but I do like to save them first and, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's do this. I'm putting my tape there. Never never corrupt, cover up those registration marks. All right. So my point is once you've done all your shapes, you can cut out a bunch of extra shapes that are like wider than your first shapes. And then you have little outlines for your shapes to, that'll contrast with your background. All right, so now we go back to what we learned in the first section which is the pencil trick. You always need the pencil trick whenever there's gaps. I have a separate martini glass, so I'll show you. So I have to cover in this section there, and there's a little part on the stem of the martini glass down there. That's the extra gap. I didn't see that gap at first, but there are two gaps. All right. Never erase with the red pencil when you mess up. Always erase with a white eraser so it doesn't leave marks on your paper. And these will be you do want to erase them later so you go with the artist's original intent. Never try to change the artist's original intent. If there were little gaps there, they were meant to be there. They're part of the design. So go back and erase them later. All right, so there. My martini glasses are enclosed. Why don't I color first and then cut them out? Because you, you could mess up your coloring. And, and if you color outside the lines, that's what will get scanned. Um, also because it, not all images cut out the first time or ever cut out. So there's many reasons I don't color first. I'm going to color later. So there we go. Now we have that. So I'm going to show you what that looks like before we get too far. Because I don't want you to be like scratching your heads right now. Nobody's scratching their head. We're not even allowed to even touch our face to scratch our heads, right? All right, so here we go. Home. We're, we're starting back at the beginning, but I needed to show you the martini glass close up, like I promised. So here. Here's the martini glass close up. The scan and cut works when you, this is, doesn't matter now, I'm scanning stamped images. It doesn't matter that this is a digital stamp set. Crafty friends, the same thing I'm doing is when you stamp an image. It doesn't matter if you stamp an image or you're using a digital stamp set. It doesn't matter if you're using pattern paper right now. Whenever you're scanning a pattern of any kind, the scan and cut needs to have enclosed objects. All objects need to be enclosed, so if there's any gaps, this will cause havoc and it'll try to go in and do all kinds of weird things, so you need to close any gaps you see with a pencil. A pencil so that you can erase it later there's a little gap down there so that's what I'm showing you close up always enclose the gaps if not you will not get a good outline all right so let's do this we're going to use scan to cut data we're gonna we could just directly cut this out but we don't want to cut it out yet because we already know how to do that 
So let me, let me go over this concept. Right now, the reason we need to use scan to cut data, I'm gonna start back at the beginning. I have to, I have to always go over these concepts, is if you were to just now, if you wanna just directly cut these out, that's fine. You're gonna get this. Well, you're, and, then I'm, and then I'm gonna show you how to color it. So we'll get a martini glass, that'll be awesome sauce. Great, we have a martini glass. However, if you wanna create outlines for this martini glass, I have to get the paper again. Let me get my foil. Okay, and yeah, I wanna, I wanna create these, these are foil, sorry for the big glare if I just blinded you with this foil. I have some foil cardstock. Now, if I was trying to make, let me find a page. All right. I have to teach you this to, so you understand why I'm doing this because you're gonna otherwise you're gonna be scratching your heads and go, why is she doing all this extra work when she could you could have just done this so here? Because when I when I printed out the digital stamp set, these were super far away apart. Okay, so normally, and you've been watching my channel. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I would have just directly cut these out, which we which we can do. We can directly cut these out. That's not a problem. But you already know how to do that, and you'll end up with this. We're gonna use a you know you directly cut them. Use direct cut, use an outline distance of 0 0.04, and you get a perfect martini glass. Now then when you want to then when you want to increase the outline distance and get an outline around it, of like say, in this case I want to put foil around it, look how far apart they are. I'm wasting a giant piece of foil. I'd be wasting a giant piece of foil. But because they're too far away. So that's why I need scan to cut data. Although I could just directly cut these out without saving the, the glasses. Let me find one. Here's some copper foil I did earlier. Okay, I'm trying to make it so we get a little outline that we can save and reuse and cut out all our outlines at once using foil and save lots of paper. Okay, so this is what this is what I'm going for. I'm making outlines right now. So whew, I hope I hope you guys understand that. Please give this video a comment that if you understand what I'm talking about, or if I was really confusing you, I'll do it again another time. So pattern and scan. Go to scan. We're gonna say scan to cut data. Scan to cut data. And let's see, are these in the top 12 by six? Yes. We don't need color recognition mode, black and white recognition mode. You could change it to color, but we don't need color. But you know, shout out to Kim and RT for thinking about the color recognition mode. Sometimes you have to use color recognition mode and that does work a lot of times. So whenever you're having trouble, use that. But most of the time we can get away with black and white. Use 12 by six since my images are on the top part of the mat and we're gonna say start. So we're scanning in the martini glasses as is. Now, if you were to use a CM model, you're just gonna have to cut them out the way they are, and it, you could use scan to cut data as well, but you can't do all the, the nice little layering I'm about to show you. So you can, do, you can use the CM350 for most of my tutorial today. There'll just be a couple things that you're gonna get to and say, hmm, your screen doesn't look like mine. So here we go, here we have it. We have in, in scan to cut data, it's asking, do you want to save the outlines of the image? That's what we want, the outlines of these glasses. Do we want the inside and outside lines? No, because we only want the outer lines. Or do you want all the lines on the screen, meaning every little stray line not connected? We want the first option. The first option is just the outer lines, the outlines. Now we're gonna, that's our glasses. We're gonna frame, frame the martini glasses. We're framing them, meaning we don't want the top, we don't want those sentiments, we just want the martini glasses. Okay? We just say preview. And that's it. We say okay. And now it's asking, where do you want to save these? Okay, where do we want to save these? Let's save them to our machine. Okay? Save them to our machine. I talked about where the other places were to save. We might run out of room, let's say. I do have to delete files a lot. Yep, it, it worked. It, it saved him. Okay, now it's the next day. Just turn, delete all time. I'm going home. It's the next day. Again, it's pretty cool because you can retrieve your files. Now, in this case, my papers are in the same exact spot. So we can retrieve the data. Let's retrieve it. And let's go to the machine and get it. It's at the last page. There's our martini glasses. So here's our options. Our options are we can cut these out and we... we probably should just do that because otherwise you're gonna be like how did she get her martini glasses right and I want you to be able to repeat my tutorial so let's go ahead and let's let's do that let's just go ahead and cut those out I don't care that it makes my tutorial take longer because I think it'll really teach you the concept oh, oops oops cancel 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 
You know why? I forgot to put an outline distance around them. I didn't get very far, but you'll see that I always screw things up as well. Okay, cancel. All right, go back. We're gonna we're gonna uh, select these. We're just gonna select them all. Or no, we'll select one at a time, so you can actually see it. I need to go in. When I scanned it, I scanned it in just as it was. But now when I cut it, I need an outline distance. Otherwise, if I, when you use scan to cut data, it just, it just saved the martini glass. But I need to use this outline distance. I'm going to cut it first. And I, it does go negative, by the way. Okay, so it goes negative. So let's, let's say okay. So what, what, I, what I did is, there. I'm getting rid of the small one. We'll get rid of the small one in a minute. I will put it, oh, it's okay, we'll get rid of it. And then we wanna put an outline distance around this one. Okay, oops, not zero eight, zero four. Okay, so I have to, I'm gonna get rid of these two. These are my original cups. Because when I, when I cut this from the scan to cut data, I wanna cut out ones with outline distance. So we'll go ahead and trash that with the trash can and trash that. Okay, so as you can tell already, and we're gonna go ahead and cut those. We're gonna cut them with the outline distance. I accidentally cut some along the line, and I was about to do it again, so I need to show you what those look like. They are a hot mess when you cut along the line. When you can use an outline distance, it's more forgiving. I don't really like them cut along the line, because I think it's just too tight. See, it even cut off my olive. So you don't wanna cut them along the line, like this. You want the outline distance, because look, my little olive twig got cut off, which is kind of cute. I mean, it's still a cute little glass and it did a pretty good job, Like, but I just like the outline distance around those. It just looks better. All right, so that's so far, this is what we have. In fact, we don't even need this paper anymore. We're done with this. We got our Bertini glasses, so we're happy. Okay, there there we go. So just, so you, just to review, while I have this on the mat, that foil thing again I was talking about. I'm gonna use a piece of foil to show you. If I wanted to just do outlines, like say I was using direct cut and I wanted to cut outlines around these now and I stuck the foil down and that'd be fine and I increased the outline distance, then I would have wasted all this foil because there's like they're so far apart from each other. So that's why I'm teaching you this trick because this is the trick that I actually used to cut all, to make all my martini glasses. So I'm showing you things. I don't just come up with these. I don't come up with tutorials out of thin air. Believe it or not. I don't just make up tutorial name. Every time I do a tutorial, it's because I struggle with the same thing. I figured out how to do it easier, and I'm teaching you how to do it in an easier way. So usually um, my tutorials are from my, my crafty friends struggling with something or me struggling with something. So now we have these awesome martini glasses. Now, I don't need this tape anymore either. I don't, well, we'll use it later. We have, so back to the martini glass. So, whew, I'm, all, I'm, I'm kind of on the final stretch of this part. So let's, all right. We're going back to the beginning. I'm just going back to the beginning. Okay, we, we have these martini glasses. We retrieve our data. We're gonna go retrieve data. And we're, there's my stylus. I keep picking up the paintbrush instead of my stylus. We're retrieving it from the machine. Last page, there's our martini glasses. All right, here we go. These are the original size martini glasses. So we need these to be bigger because I'm making them in foil now. This one has a 0 0.04 outline distance, which I'll eventually put this in the notes or my blog post. I haven't even done a blog post from my last video yet. Or I did, but there were no measurements on it, I should say. See, and the next one needs to be 0 0.08. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's click OK, never trash it now. You wanna go in here. We wanna edit it. So look, edit, and we wanna make these object edit, we wanna make these objects have a 0 0.08 outline distance. I decided that that was good. Of course, you decide which size you want around. I just thought it makes the martini glasses shine when you put foil behind them. 0 0.08, now of course a, 0 .0, a 10 would look good as well. Not too big though, you know, just a little shimmer around the outside of the glass. So we have a 0 0.08, we're gonna say okay. Whenever you do this though, folks, you have to move your original one away. And we're gonna delete the original one. We don't want that anymore. Okay, we don't, we don't need this anymore. Now we're gonna do that again to this one. Well, we, we could have just duplicated that one, but we'll get to that. We're making it 0 0.08 and we say okay, and now we'll get, we'll get rid of the original. So now we can get rid of these. Trash, trash. 
All right, she's talking about saving paper. What is she talking about? All right, here's what I'm talking about. We have a piece of six by six. This just happens to be rose gold foil because I have a lot of it. It was in clearance. So it's in this medley I have. So I have a lot of foil, but it's only six by six inches. So I could sit and move my martini glasses into the six by six inch quadrant, or I could do something where I change the paper size to, to only cut in that area. Okay, so let's do that. we we'll click there and we're gonna change the cutting area. Okay, once again, how did I get there? From the wrench, that's how you always get there. The wrench is your settings. In, now you're gonna change the cutting area. You're going to select the cutting area you want. I want the top left corner because it's, it's okay, it's working well today, it's behaving. Six by six or close enough. I kinda just want this general area. That's my cutting area. It's, it's not quite six by six obviously because it doesn't cut past the red line. But that, you get the idea. I want all my champagne, I mean my martini glasses to fit up in there. Which is nice now because now I can, I can figure out how many I can put there. So from experimentation, let's see, and I even made some little ones. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I could fit nine. Let's, but I'm, I'm not gonna actually make all these, but I wanna show you. So we're, we just select, I'm selecting one of them and I'm gonna click on the plus and I'm gonna make a bunch more. And if it doesn't fit nine, eight more, that's eight more, or how many total? We're gonna see if it'll fit. So now I'm gonna show you auto layout. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna change the number. So auto layout is, instead of me sitting there going like all this and trying to fit them into this area, I'm gonna let the machine, the computer in the machine, figure out how many will fit and where they will fit and all this. It doesn't tell me exactly how many, but it'll tell me if these will all fit. So we're gonna click okay, and we're gonna click okay. Now this is the auto layout. When you get to the screen where it says add, edit, and you see these little shapes, it looks a lot like the group icon, except the group icon that we used earlier to group things with only had two little shapes in it. This one has a bunch of little shapes in it. This is the auto layout. Click on that, and there's your options. I like the first option. It's when it's going to decide, does it take my champagne glasses or martini glasses, and it's gonna decide like which way to put them. So it's gonna make some go that way and some go that way. And I like the first option. It means turn them any which way you need to. That's the first option and lay them out. The next one says turn them either straight up or straight down. That's what that option means. Straight up or straight down. And this last option is it's only gonna keep them all facing in the right same direction. Well, we don't want these two options because it doesn't utilize our mat and it wastes a lot of paper. We want the first option. We, the first option saves you the most paper, but it's telling you you still don't have enough space on the mat. So we just, I just keep on trying to delete. I'm gonna go edit, I'm gonna delete one of my, one of my martini glasses. And we're gonna try it again. Auto layout. And there, it did it. So that was eight, but I think I forgot to count the one that was, yeah, it does fit eight, okay? So all these things are spinning through your head. What about bigger, smaller, da 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 da? Yes, d when you're in scan to cut data, you can do things like that. We made these bigger than the original. You can make them, these are for the outline distance. Now we're not modifying, don't modify the file like digitally, but I'm just, I'm just cutting out little outlines for my cards, okay? You are not supposed to be modifying your digital files. So I'm just scanning them in and we're making a little outline for our cards, okay? But yes, you can make them smaller and we'll show you what I did with that later. All right, okay, 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 we're gonna click okay, select cut. And it may even need to, the blade or the, um, not the blade, the lever. There's a lever on your scan and cut. I'm just showing you why I would, there's the six by six area. Oh, that's bright, right? That foil is really bright. Six by six area, put down your foil. If you wanna tape it, make sure you're not taping anywhere where it would have cut the, anywhere where the little gla martini glasses are. And you cut out your martini glasses. But there is, let's see if it needs the, the lever. The lever, if it does need it, because it decides the paper's very thick, then your lever is right here. You might say to set your lever to lever two. So let's see how far we get. Let's see if it does that. And I don't want to make you wait while I cut out eight of these, but I just want you to see. Oh, avalanche. I always have an avalanche on my table. See, start, it says two minutes, and it will change to four minutes if it needs lever two. I'll show you what, I just want to show you that in case it does it to you. So. 
Sometimes it wants to do two passes, a cutting. It means it wants to cut it twice. And I say, no, don't cut it twice. Because it only really needs to cut foil one time. Okay, and it's still doing, I'm gonna pause. Okay, I'm gonna quit cutting. All right, so, okay, because I got my first one cut out, so you get the idea. It didn't need to do two passes. Yay! Let's make sure, yes. And you wanna, you know, get that out with a spatula. So this is our little outline for our card. We have these beautiful foiled martini glasses. And then we have outlines for them. So now let me turn, let me turn my camera at a different angle and you are going to get to see now the projects, the coloring, the projects, the digital stamp set, and much more. But that's how you would, you would cut out. The point is you would cut out a whole page of those and save yourself lots of, uh, lots of um, space. So I cut out a bunch of these at once. You don't want to waste a lot of foil. So now you know how to change your cutting area so that you don't waste a lot of foil. Oops. Don't try to, don't try to close your machine with all those things in it. And let's see what we can color on. I don't have a coloring mat. I didn't get out a mat, but this is the address to download the digital stamp set that I'm using today. And all 100% of the proceeds go to the relief efforts. So you're going not to my website. I won't even know that you downloaded it unless you want to put in the comments you downloaded it. But I don't know it. You just go to this website and you download it. Okay, I have no way of keeping track, but I just know that once a week I'll keep my crafty friends abreast of the fundraising efforts as our CEO of our company tells us. Why am I trying to erase that? Where are the ones I cut out earlier? What I'm trying to do is erase the marks. Here we go. What I'm, what, this is what I want to do. I want to erase the marks and then I want to show you how to color these so that when I show you my projects, none of, none of this, none of what I'm showing you is a mystery. So they told us in the stamp, I gotta, I gotta make sure I don't block that website. They told us when we were downloading the file, they said, they told us what the coordinating colors were. So I saw that Old Olive was a coordinating color and I go, oh good, Old Olive, because the, I can color the olives in Old Olive. So what I'm doing now is the first step is you erase your pencil marks. Okay, trying not to bend your stamped image too much. I actually prefer the black ones better, but when you have two martini glasses, it looks kind of cool to have one. Oops, sorry for brightness there. Let me change my camera angle, I mean my light. When you, when you have two martini glasses, it's kind of nice to have one that's in old olive and one in black, but the black martini glass definitely looks a lot better. It's easier to color too, so we're gonna just color the black one. Okay. And I'm erasing the pencil marks before I color. Okay, and we'll do this. There's a little pencil mark down on the, on the stem. I didn't color the stem itself, I just colored the martini glass and you can use dark petal pink because they said petal pink was one of the coordinating colors so I just use dark petal pink and I'm using the uh, thick side and I'm just making the martini petal pink the quarantini not the martini I'm coloring the quarantini and then we have the light petal pink for the top part of the liquid this, these are Stampin' Blends, and of course you can use any light color marker you have. Then I take my olives to, cut the, uh, to color the olives. I'm using light old olive. I'm using the thin side. All our markers have a thin and a thick side. I'm using the thin side to color the olives. It just makes it come to life when you color it in, the, the stamped image. And so use whatever tools you have, colored pencils, markers, blends, whatever. Color in your olives. And there they go. And then I'm thinking these olives have some maraschino cherries in them. And I didn't want to use my cherry cobbler ink. So I used real red light. That's what I used, real red light, because cherry cobbler, although these are like maraschino cherries, I think they are, but the cherry cobbler was too dark. So I'm just using light, real red. It seemed to be the right kind of red for the inside of the olives. And there you have it. And then you take Stampin' Dimensionals, which are just the little foam adhesives we sell. And I like to use the small Stampin' Dimensionals. And I turn this over. And don't worry that your blends bleed through because that is okay. It's all good because you don't see the back of your stamped images. And because I'm using Thin Whisper White, or actually, I don't even think I'm using Whisper White. I think I blended right onto the cheap cardstock I printed them on. I didn't have eight and a half by 11 Whisper White. 
because that's not how I roll. I, I usually get the 12 by 12 Whisper White, and I wasn't about to cut it up to just print these digital images. So I printed on really cheap cardstock I had. And it still let the, the it still accepted the blends really well. But either way, even if I was using my nice Whisper White cardstock, it would have still bled through because they're both thin. And where's my champagne, I mean my martini glass. So we'll put that on there. That's the one we just cut out the foil. So you're putting, you're just centering that on with dimensionals. And now you have your element. And then what I did is after I got that all centered and it was all good, then I took my Wink of Stella and I gave it some sparkle. This is a color lifter, by the way, if you mess up. That's just for if you mess up. And I gave my little thing some sparkle. And now, pretty cool. So that's how, that's how I did it. So let's show you the projects that you can create with this concept. And in my brother's Scan and Cut user group, I put my sister's quarantini recipe that she came up with on there. And she came up with a COVID-19 quarantini recipe. You can't see it very well here because it's on Facebook, but here's the quarantini recipe that she came up with. And she did this about six weeks ago. My sister's very creative as well and creative in the kitchen especially. So COVID-19. <laughs> and the 19 is the 19 cranberries you put in your quarantini recipe. So if you want the picture of that, that's a little better view. I just thought it'd be nice when I give people quarantini cards to give them a recipe to actually make a quarantini. So here are my four or five little projects that I created using this concept. And let's start with my favorite, which is this little piggy. This little piggy stamp set is retiring, unfortunately. So have another quarantini. Okay. And I think I did cut these ones shorter than the ones I just showed you in the video. So I will, I will definitely give you some different suggestions on the rectangles, but you get the concept is still there and I can't redo the video now. <laughs> but what I did is then I cut out some rectangles that are bigger. And again, have another, oh, by the way, this was the lots of happy, this is lots of happy card kit where I put this, I put some, I put some sentiments in the middle and lots of happy. And then that's the, this little piggy stamp set. And then this is, so that's the lots of happy card kit and using the golden honey specialty designer series paper. All these pictures are on my Facebook business page that you get a better view and my Instagram, my, and uh, they'll be on my blog eventually. I just haven't had time to put them there yet. See what I'm saying about this not really showing up very well. I'm gonna change my light. See what I mean about the petal pink? So one of the coordinating colors is petal pink and you just can't see it very well unless I put it like right up to the camera, have another quarantini. But the petal pink matched with this, this card and this card here is from the Lovely Day Paper Pumpkin Kit. And I really like the fold of this card. See how cool is that? So you can write a whole message in there and it tucks in. So if you have any Lovely Day Paper Pumpkin Kits and the refills, Old Olive envelopes coordinate with it. This was all came in there and this is Rococo Rose in the background. The petal pink coordinated with that. So that's another quarantini project. Whoop, I need to not cover up where you download this from, sorry. But I still want you to see all the projects, so we'll put that over there. Have another quarantini, all right. Sorry, it's so bright. There we go, that's a little better. I'm gonna move her quarantini recipe. So look at that online. She gave me permission to share it in my group, so I did share the quarantini recipe in my group. And I don't wanna cover up that. So this is another one, so I used, for this one, no, for this one, it's the same as this one. This, this quarant, have another quarantini. I used that same concept of cutting out the rectangles and cutting out bigger rectangles to go behind it. So you can see how I just kind of layered shapes around. And this is shorter than the ones I just showed you how to cut, but the concept is still the same. Use your scan and cut to create a template, the size you want it, and reuse your template. Okay, so same thing, lots of happy card kit. Lots of happy card kit, golden honey specialty designer series paper, and I'm not done covering the front yet. Okay, and then the last card, the last example is, I'm using, this is another card kit, it's called, called, let's see. I took out these things to show you what I used, let's see. So we've used, this one, this was the lovely day. That was, by the way, that was a paper pumpkin kit. That's where I used this one from, okay? That was the lovely day. Here it goes, February, 2020. And this was Lots of Happy. I'm doing a series on card kits, so check out that. So I used this card from Lots of Happy 
to make my little piggy card and to make the other quarantini card, okay? So I, I think that's why I had to cut the sentiment shorter, come to think of it, because they wouldn't fit across the cards. The cards were too narrow, okay? And then lastly, I'm using this all-inclusive kit, which unfortunately we've already sold out of in English, but we do have it in French. So if you just get card kits for the cards like I do and you don't really care about the stamp set, or if you do care about the stamp set, you can get it in French and you'll get this really cool kit before it retires. But if you do care about the stamp set being in English, I do have two extra English ones for my customers. And I would give you an English stamp set if you did buy that card kit. So that card kit gave me these elements I needed. And this is what I mean by card kits. You just grab out a card and you make a card. I mean, that's it. They're just already made for you. Like you take it out of the box and they're already there. The sequins are in the kit. This is my second kit I've opened. And then it comes with all kinds of cards. So three cheers for you is really fun. And I just like having extra embellishments. That's where I got this from. That's where I got the envelope from. And have another quarantini. And those are the layered sequins. And then I use some noble peacock rhinestones. All right, so last but not least, I promised to show you this digital stamp set. It's 15 pages. You're gonna get the coordinating colors and the instructions. I'm doing it faster this time. I did it slower in my first video. The digital stamp set has elements that will help you cheer up people. And it's, it's a stamp set for our times that we're in. And anything that you make, any shapes, here's the page we just worked on, Quarantini. Again, make whatever rectangles and squares you want, group them, re reuse them. That's what we just learned. You can apply the concepts from today's Brother Scan and Cut tutorial to any of these pages. And your you can put the paper anywhere you want on your mat that's a sticky spot. And you can just keep reusing those same shapes in the template I taught you and just keep reusing it and cutting them out again and again. So that's why I was just trying to teach you how to save time and paper today. And so the measurements aren't that important, but I will put them in the description. It's more important that you, that you use the sentiments that you wanna use and that you get create the shapes for the sentiments that you wanna cut out. And one thing I did notice while I was playing around with this stamp set is that when I get to this page with the hearts, that I have, that you might not even need a scan and cut. You could you be using your paper trimmer to cut these out. Stampin' Up! also gives you a list of coordinating dies and prod products that go with this in the table of contents. But what I noticed when I got to page 14 is this. I noticed that my little punch, my heart punch that I got for the Valentine's Day crafts coordinates perfectly with this heart here on page 14. So just so you know, crafty friends, I know a lot of you have a lot of Stampin' Up! products like me and just so you know that that page coordinates. So I'm sure other punches, like I used the timeless label punch on this one, and I'm sure you have other punches that will be able to punch out the sentiments. Also your dies, you can use your dies for punching them out. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. This is The Papered Chef.